everybody knows Roger Rabbit from the beloved Disney movie. Go ahead and talk to us a little bit. How did your Roger Rabbit end up getting onto the big screen? Uh, one day, I got a call, and you know, I picked up the phone. Phone on the voice on the other end says, "Scary Wolf." Yeah, it's right. It's Roy Disney. I said, "Yeah, right. Who is this really?" Yeah. And that was one of my friends joking me. He said, "No, no, no. It's really Roy Disney." And I said, "I just read your book." And would you be interested in uh, selling the rights to Disney? We'd like to make it into a movie. Well, the odd thing about this phone call, aside from the fact that it was Roy Disney himself and I didn't believe it, the odd thing about this was that he called me six months before the book actually came out. The book is still not come out. And so I really thought that there was somebody joking me. And I said, well, are you really? He said, no, no, no. He said, somebody at St. Martin's. And I never found out who. Had I found out who I would have kissed him or her full on the lips. <laughs> but somebody at St. Martin's sent Disney a copy of the manuscript with a note saying, I think you'd really like this. And it made its way up to Roy Disney, and Roy Disney did like it. Uh, they saw Roger Rabbit as a movie that they had to have. The other thing that they needed were the characters. They saw Roger Rabbit, uh, they saw Jessica, uh, they saw Baby Herman as those characters that they could merchandise. Disney does a ton of merchandise. They make a lot of money selling lunch boxes and dolls and you know, whatever they have. So they, that's all this, what they wanted to do. So Roy, you know, I signed the deal with Disney. It was for more money than I had made on everything I had ever really put together. Uh, I was one happy guy. And then they started trying to produce Roger Rabbit's movie. I didn't really think that they had the worst power to do it. And this was 1980. 1980, they really didn't have the horsepower to do it. Uh, they started doing uh, tests to see if they could incorporate live action animation. They really weren't doing it very well. So at one point they came to me and said, look, here's an idea. What do you think of this? How about if instead of doing it live action animation, we do it live action all the way through and the animated characters are the characters that would be in costume at Disneyland. What do you think on that? Kind of compromises the, you know, the premise of the book and look a little cooler. It's prevailed there. I was trying to do it again. Well, there came a point when a number of things happened at Disney. Uh, they had a kind of a corporate upheaval, and Michael Eisner came in. Uh, he brought in Jeff Kasser as his head of motion pictures. Uh, the two of them, the first thing that they do, and this always happens when you know, Top management changes to the movie studio. The first thing they did was throw out all of the projects that they had in development because that was what got the previous administration into trouble and they're going to start fresh. So they threw out all the, um, all the projects except for one of the project rabbit. It was the only project they kept. They didn't do something that nobody had done prior to that. They brought in an outside producer to produce. Roger Rabbit for them. And the guy they brought in was a man named Steve Spielberg, uh, who had had a few successes at the time. Uh, but when Steve Spielberg gets involved in your project, that's, that's serious business. That's serious business. And to show you, you know, what a difference Steve Spielberg makes in Hollywood, when Roy Disney was trying to produce his movie, he went to Warner Brothers. And he said, I'm producing a movie. Uh, it's live action animation with cartoon characters and real people. I'd like to use Bugs Bunny in a cameo. I'd like him to walk on, on screen, say, ah, what's up, Doc? And then walk off. He'll be on screen for no more than 15 seconds. And Warner Brothers said, get lost. Get lost. There's no way that Bugs Bunny is ever going to be in a Disney movie. It's just never going to happen. So five years later, Steve Spielberg walked in and made the exact same request. So, Take bugs. What about what about Wiley Coyote in the room? What about Yosemite Sam? How about Tweety Bird? A Porky Pig? You gotta kick them all. So Steve Spielberg walks out with every Warner Brothers character. However, cartoon characters being superstars is not really interactive. They do have their contracts and their contractual obligations. So the majority of them were. Not much, $1,000 a piece. I mean, I'm going to pay for that myself. But Bugs was more expensive. And 
Bugs being the superstar and a writer who has got Bugs had to be in every scene with Mickey. You could not have Mickey in a scene without Bugs. They were co-superstars. They had to be in every scene together. And they had to have the same identical words of dialogue. So if you go through and watch the movie frame by frame, you will see the couple words you can see that they do the same thing. Yeah, when the movie when the movie uh, finally premiered, uh, and, and uh, they were working on this movie until literally until the day before it came out, uh, the animators were still making changes, making changes, making changes. I had never seen the whole movie put together, and I had never seen my credit on the screen. Uh, they uh, uh, they had the uh, they had the, the premiere in New York City uh, at the Arcado Theater, and in the premiere, I was sitting next to Kathleen Turner, on one side, who was the speaking voice of Jessica, but she did it without credit for the movie because nobody really knew if this movie was going to be any good. The movie for that year, which was 1988, um, was the top grossing movie of the year, grossed uh, seven hundred million million. Uh, won four Academy Awards, and uh, I wrote the sequel album, which was Who Would Book a Plug to Watch a Rabbit. Um, so, uh, that one came out. Disney also bought the screen rights to that one. Uh, and then just very recently, I came out with uh, the third Roger Rabbit album, which is Who Whacked Roger Rabbit, currently available only as a digital download, but shortly it will be also a you know, book like this one here. Um, you can find out about that on my website, www.gearwolf.com, uh, or you can go to, to fans of Who Whacked Roger Rabbit on Facebook. Well, we want to thank Gary Wolf for sitting down with us for this awesome interview. This was really great. Tons of detail on Roger Rabbit. So thank you so much for joining us this evening, and thank you for uh, helping us out with Sheep Shades. This has been really awesome. Oh, and you know, i got to tell you, Sheep Shades are very useful. Because first of all, you know, Judge Doom, with those big eyes, give him a pair of sheep sheets, he'd have been a normal guy. Uh, and there are times when, like, Roger will stick his ears into an electrical socket, and he will just light up and you can see the skeleton. Sheep shades are going to take care of your eyes when that happens. Right? So there you go, the official endorsement of Toontown there for sheep shades. So thank you very much, Gary, for My having pleasure. us.